So welcome everyone uh, to the first uh, AutoWare uh, Safe Autonomy Seminar of 2023. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Wee Song Shi. He's a professor and the chair of the Department of Computer and Information Sciences as, at University of Delaware. So I've known uh, Wee Song for many years and uh, he's been a wonderful colleague and a good friend. And uh, he has a tremendous amount of you know, activity and huge amount of energy in running the connected and autonomous research, the CAR laboratory, uh, which he had in uh, university uh, in in Michigan before coming to Penn uh, to uh, uh, University of Delaware, and so Dr. Shi, he is really well known for uh, his work in uh, you know edge computing, autonomous driving, connected health. In fact, one of his papers on edge computing, vision and challenges, has been cited over five thousand four hundred times. Uh, so Dr. Shi is also the chair of the IEEE Computer Society for Special Technology Community on Autonomous Driving Technologies, the ADT, uh, and is on the Strategic Planning Committee member of Autoware Foundation. He's an IEEE Fellow and an ACM Distinguished Scientist, and he has many more you know, uh, awards and uh, has chaired many conferences. So without uh, much delay, I would like to uh, have uh, invite uh, Professor Wee Song Shi to talk about all the exciting work he's doing in the University of Delaware Car Lab. Welcome. Thank you, Raul. Um, thank you for the nice uh, introduction. And uh, uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to be here. And uh, thanks for the uh, pen engineering uh, for this opportunity to share with you the, what we call the vehicle computing vision and challenges. Well, actually, when we first starting this, you know, this kind of uh, thinking about what's important for the, uh, you know, vehicles and uh, vehicle computing was something, a, a term that uh, as a computer science, we like it to have studied cloud computing, edge computing, and et cetera. So that's, as you can see, that is one of the term, but some of you, you know, if you're working in this area, you might choosing using different terms, but don't really be bothered by the term itself. So I think, uh, I hope by the end of today's talk, hopefully either you already agree with, with me on, the, on this vision, or maybe you've been convinced that, wow, this is something really big is happening right now. So without, with, oh, without further ado, I will starting today's talk. Uh, sorry, something wrong on my side, okay. All right, so basically today's talk including two parts. The first thing is, I want to explain that what is vehicle computing when, you know, in mind when we, um, are we on the, so that we can bring everybody on the same page. You know, back to a couple of years ago when I give this, uh, this, this talk, I, the first one I called why vehicle computing, but I don't think by the 2023, we need to justify why we need this. Actually, it's much better for us to see what is this and how can I contribute to, to this? And then, in the second half, I will talk a, a little bit about uh, the research activities that at the car lab, where um, majority of the work has been moving to you know, Delaware right now, but I still have a few students back to uh, Wayne State in Michigan. So now first, let's take a look of this, uh, the landscape today, you know, what happened in the connected autonomous vehicle. As you can see that this era is coming. So when we talk about, you know, in the, Academia, when we say some some error is coming, you know, sometimes the professors are always, uh, you know, optimistic. You know, one of my former students who working working in a Volkswagen uh, come back to me and said, "Wow, you know, you you are in many in many occasions you are so enthusiastic about something, you know, but some probably is not that big. But what I want to say here is the CAV is really coming, as you can see from this uh, sort of." Uh, screenshot prepared by one of my students. As you can see that almost every single OEMs, uh, by the way, if you are not familiar with OEM, you know, in the auto industry, we always name those uh, big car ma makers as uh, OEMs, okay? Like a Ford, Honda, GM, Volkswagen. So as you can see that uh, pretty much, you know, Europe, China, Asia, you know, Japan, United States, every single OEMs are starting to team up with either cloud, you know, different type of cloud providers. Some of them even provide, uh, you know, partner with multiple of them. So the reason is very simple. is because this market is there. As you can see that by 2027, based on the estimation, the CAV market will be $225 billion. And it's actually contribute about 17% of this, you know, 
um, related to this uh, growth, you know, the of the uh, related to the GDP. So similarly, what happened is in the United States alone, about 50% of the vehicles running here, 200 million vehicles will be connected. So this is why everybody right now is talking about the connected vehicle. So to give you an idea that CAV, so what does CAV look like? So I just pick one of the, you know, the, the platform that our lab have, uh, have been developed, uh, which is based on the Ford Fusion. It looks like a, a, a regular vehicle, but if I tell you that the, uh, the price, the cost of this, you were getting a sense about why that the vehicle computing error is coming here. Look at this particular platform, we call it Hydra. The hardware, let me, not hardware, I mean the vehicle itself is a two, uh, 2017 for the Fusion. It costs only $20,000. But the whole platform itself is cost $200,000. So where are the other 90% of the cost goes to? So that is something we need to think about it. And I particularly encourage the, you know, PhD students and those researchers thinking about that because this is where the next things are gonna happen. So the sensors, obviously, sen you know, sen sensor uh, itself is, is quite costly at this point. And then that, uh, you know, perception algorithms, software. So before, even before the CAV, you know, Rahu is, is uh, you know, has been, working in the cyber physical system, we know that the vehicle alone has a more than six million line of code. It's the most complicated. I heard, although I didn't verify that, you know, this, you know, one particular vehicle have much more, much more line of code than a space shuttle. You know, this is like the most complicated stuff, which I, I hope, you know, sooner this is going to be changed. Because that those algorithms, in addition to existing vehicle, you're gonna add in more and more stuff. How do I do navigation, object detection, train, you know, tracking, and etc. Eventually, we need to make a decision because before the decision was made in by drivers. In the future, the decision is made in by software. So all these things, as some of you probably heard about the software defined vehicles, this is just the change the whole you know landscape of the. OEMs, you know, you many OEMs today, as of 2023, they already have a division called software defined vehicles. You know, I have two part-time PhD students, actually both of them working in the SD, uh, you know, SDV division in the in their companies. So that is just give you an idea about the big things is changing you know, is here, the algorithm, you know, the software and, uh, and et cetera. Because of the software that we have to re related to the cloud platform. Because, for example, how are you gonna be updating all the software in the sense called OTA, you know, over the, uh, you know, over the air updating? Because that uh, imagine that you, today you have a uh, machine learning algorithm running on your vehicle. And then if there's a new model comes in and which you, if you're in computer science, you're quite familiar with this, right? So the, for example, you know, you have you know v3 v4 v5 and now you people is talking about even have a more and more different versions so how do you maintain the consistency of all the vehicles imagine one year toyota like a 2022 toyota has has sold um about 10 million vehicles and each of them needs to be updated a continuously software i don't think any of the oems today is ready to take on this kind of tasks so that's why they have to, although they probably, they don't want to, but they have to rely on some cloud companies to help them to maintain this kind of, you know, software updating and uh, many, many things, you know, that we're talking about. Because Raul and I, we were involved on this uh, AutoWare Foundation. For example, if AutoWare as an operating system running on the vehicles, every single module potentially could be updated. Now, how can you update it? And there is a lot of issue related to safety here. You can't randomly just updating them. So this that's why so this big picture here shows you that you know the map and then the model training, the data storage. So where this data collecting from those sensors is going to be stored, and then other simul you know sometimes you need a simulation, uh, digital twins, and all these related things will be jumping into to this uh, exciting field. So to give you a sense, if you are not working in this space give you a sense about what are these sensors can do right now. So this, uh, I use this picture coming from one of the on, online, you know, that uh, source to show you, uh, you don't need to know it. 
exactly what 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 this uh, the picture is about. But you can get a sense about in a vehicle today, uh, which you you bought from the uh, from the OEM dealership. You have, they have multiple sensors which have different capabilities. And the other, other thing I want to share, uh, share with you is there, there is always multiple ways to do the same thing. For example, parking. Now people talking about uh, autonomous parking might be one of the most uh, easiest you know, application you're gonna see sooner. You know, a big city like Philadelphia go to parking, you wish, right? When you go to a Chinatown, there is a very difficult parking there, but you wish you just uh, let the car go to find somewhere. But how do you do the parking? You can use in LIDAR, you can use in camera, you can use in radar. You have multiple things you, you can do. So that is another challenge faced by the, the, the future vehicle vehicles because it's not like a traditionally one thing, you have one kind of control. Now, the same function could be implemented very differently. As a infamous, I would say, example is you know Tesla, at this point, they still don't use any LIDAR because um, they think a camera is enough, but obviously camera is not enough because camera in, in some better weather and stuff, you will run into some other issues here. If you want to go to a level for real, you know, autonomous driving here. So that just give you an idea about what are these sensors and, and, and et cetera. So those, you know, you know, those sensors are capable of sensing a lot of things, you know, for the vehicle. So, so far I'm talking about all the sensor is only used for the driving uh, alone. But that is just the, the tip of the whole, you know, iceberg of the whole thing here. So let me pick another example to show you that, for example, for the infrastructure management, you know, in the many developed countries, because the infrastructure has been old, particularly in the US, you know, President Biden just a couple of years ago have this $1 trillion, you know, infrastructure, uh, you know, bill is trying to uh, boost, you know, increase this infrastructure here. But then one of the big thing here is in the US, it's not, it's not necessary you just build the new infrastructure. It's actually how do you maintain them in a safe way? For example, traditionally, you know, colleagues who work in the civil, civil engineering, they deploy sensors on the bridge highways to monitor their behavior. But what happens is in many cases, the sensors, because of the weather uh, is changing, climate is changing, and then many of the sensors is not functioning very well. You know? So what, what happened today is, Given that most of these vehicles already have those sensors, you can rely on those sensors to do this dynamic, real-time monitoring of the infrastructure. This actually has been studying used for some critical infrastructure these days. Uh, and I, I'm not an expert on this, but my colleagues, we are talking about that. Those real-time monitoring of this bridge infrastructure can help extending the lifetime of, of this infrastructure significantly. For example, during the Better, we better weather, there's a pad hole here. If you, this is very important. You know, if you are living in Michigan before, you know, normally during the morning when I drive to, to, to school, I saw a small hole there. But then if nothing happens during the 12 hours, even less than 12 hours on my way back, you can see it's a huge hole. And then you can start to see the, the cars, the tire getting, you know, flat tire because of this, it's very dangerous. You know, those are the things you need a real time as early as possible. And the plus you can using, rely on the sensors on these vehicles and also the computing equipment on the, on the vehicles. They can dynamically calculate what's going on with this infrastructure. So this is gonna be revolutionary for the infrastructure health management. And this, as you can see that before was, was using a very passive way, but today you can do a, during crowdsourcing in computer science, a jargon crowdsourcing, you can contribute your vehicle using your sensor, doing some kind of computing. Imagine this is what's gonna happen soon. You buy, you have your vehicle. If you want to make some money, what you can do is you download an interesting app, you know, like a health manager, for example, for Philadelphia. Then you can download this here, and then you will be using the, you know, that app, gonna using the sensor on your vehicle, do the computation, contribute back to the city of Philadelphia. to help them manage the whole infrastructure reporting the, all these all these events. And those things will be done very easily is just the install app on your on your vehicle, not on your phone. And then the vehicle will allow you to make some money. And then obviously the OEM is gonna make some money from here as well because the OEM, because they provide the platform. So imagine that the future vehicle is gonna be just like today's smartphone. You know, when you download the app, think about what's the business model behind, behind the scenes. So you purchase a app, maybe getting a free 
you 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 pay somebody and then you pay for this app and then that particular app developer pay 25 percent to apple that's why apple is number one you know on the market cap because of their even they're sitting there they're collecting a lot of you know kind of revenue from this this is exactly going to be the future all two industry oems where they gonna be going to be survive so i remember when i first go to gm and give a talk nobody even believed this there was a laugh at that oh that's not gonna not gonna happen they're still very you know that uh, immersed in, in the way the current business model but i think the, today they will everybody realize that that is the future you know that the oem is not going to be rely on a vehicle to to make the contribute the bigger revenue to the certain point they will rely on the software update they will rely on the third party apps and the running on top of your vehicle to generate the revenue continuously for them so today when you purchase a vehicle it's more like you own a vehicle you have no relationship with oem in the future years you will be continuously have a relationship with them so this is just give you idea about the view that's why a couple of years ago so we starting think about that this is a whole new era is coming as you can see there we put in four layers here so the vehicle edge and the cloud is pretty common many people believe that is the idea for the uh, you know for many of these connected vehicles but we want to add one more layer here is the iot layer so the vehicle you, you imagine that if the vehicle is autonomous driving they say you drive the you you you, you park the vehicle uh, in the parking lot right while you are sitting in the in the office but the, so what happens if your vehicle actually can drive around it can do many other things for example for non-medical emergency transportation this this can uh, the one way can help you to generate some revenue for you at the same time it can help the society significantly because today particularly after the pandemic people with uh, you know senior living in the senior uh, independent living facility and also for the for the uh, people with the disabilities it's really difficult for them to go to even a regular check in the hospital so because of run out of the workforce autonomous vehicle will be perfect for these purposes you know that if you the your vehicle anyway is sitting in the parking lot is not doing anything but they can go to go to the health go to the auto industry smart home you know even for the police officers for the body wear uh, camera you know like like today uh, the iot will be able to talk into the vehicle and the vehicle as a computing unit to help you to do a lot of computing things so that's that is the the point here is it's this kind of four tier vehicle computing paradigm and then you can rely on the sensors the surrounding environment and then the computing unit and etc and those are the things that a vehicle can contribute significantly to there so if you uh, if you are not 100% convinced uh, at the lower part i write a, a two numbers here you know in most of the uh, you know before in the last century the vehicle utilization is about 10% uh, because imagine you just drive to the uh, office park it there come back home parking in the garage right so if you we can use this vehicle go to 100% like a day and a night you uh, you know assume they can quickly charge or can get getting this uh, refueled then they can run almost like 100% so that's going to be nine times uh, you know nine times more utilization so you don't need this you don't need so many vehicles and also even the city's structure of the future city going to be changed today in many of the cities you have a lot of parking structures so you assume all these vehicles are moving you don't need those so many parking structures so that's why even the future city going to be changed so that's why we think that this is a not just a one like a a five years change this is going to be compared with uh, in the 19 uh, last century when ford have this model t the transportation the car going to replace a horse today the, those uh, connected autonomous vehicle going to change in the way how we're going to be living in the city completely significant difference so that is a vision here is how you're going to be what are we going to do here so now let's drill down to well assume you buy this idea so what are how computer scientists you know we can contribute here what are the challenges so here is a is a data we uh, you know in asia they always called uh, icv intelligent connected vehicles uh, as i mentioned earlier those terms doesn't really um, you know don't be bothered by them just treat them similarly okay 
they they focus more on the intelligence. You know, some people call the CAV is more focused on the connected, but the idea is they're going to generate a huge amount of data, and this of connect the vehicle alone will be contributed about the seventeen percent of the data daily generated on this planet, and we needed to handle that. So here is an old figure estimated by uh, credited to Intel. So each autonomous vehicle can gonna generate four terabytes of data. But as a matter of fact, as the resolution of the LIDAR, the cameras is keeping uh, you know, increasing. Today, one of the vehicle probably goes to 35 terabytes of data if they continue running for 24 hours. The world, the energy consumption was a slightly in, uh, interesting thing here is, you might argue that, well, I don't need this amount of, of, of the, you know, the power. The, what happened is, if you consider the most advanced one developed by NVIDIA, the one of them, it costs like 500 watts. But that's not the end of the story, because if you want to drive a vehicle on the road for safety purposes, for reliability purposes, you need a redundancy. So for most of these vehicles, right now is running in California. They actually have a two redundant system. So that's why you need more power than if you, you know, than we, we thought in our lab, okay? To just give an idea. So here are the challenges. Now, one of the challenges obviously is the latency because imagine that you have so many different type of applications running on top of a vehicle in the future. Uh, for the transportation, as I mentioned earlier, in the vehicle computing era, transportation itself, driving, only contribute a small portion of the algorithms there. For example, object detection and et cetera. But there is many other third party applications. Imagine you want to download a lot of applications running on your vehicle and those, those vehicles need to do a lot of things. For example, detect the signs, detect the temperature, detect the, you know, the environmental stuff and, and detect the puddle holes. Those are the other applications gonna be running on your vehicle. So how do you gonna be satisfied those latency requirements from the different type of uh, you know, applications. You have a hard real-time, software real-time, and some of them is no real-time requirements. And then how are you gonna be handled this? Uh, because of the time limit, I don't want to go to a very detail on this, but just the idea is those are the computing constrained vehicles. Uh, you know, I can share with you one, one view. A couple of years ago, I exchanged with a, a general manager from Toyota. They don't even want to put in more than $200 on a particular vehicle on the computing equipment. So that goes to an interesting uh, research problem here is how can you do all this computing within these constraints in, a, in such a pri price unit, okay? In, in the unit with, with such a price is also a constraint. You could have put in a huge server there, like, uh, you know, but that is not what uh, gonna be happening on a real vehicle. So accelerated the inference of this uh, type sensitive vehicle applications is a very interesting you know, topic. The other one is transmission cost. Many of us in the city in the academia, we don't really think too much about this. You know, everybody talking about, wow, we can collect all this, uh, this you know, the data from the, from the vehicle. By the way, in one of, most of the traditional vehicles, plus uh, you know, those type of new sensors you are putting on, on the vehicle, there are more than 300 sensors available on the vehicle. So if you consider each of them every five seconds, you can do a very quick calculation with how much data needs to be transmitted from the vehicle to the cloud. If you if you are using, if you assume this model. So that is, you know, in the Ford have a huge organization called the GDIA, you know, Global Data Insights Team, that a thousand people is working on the data analytics, how to discover the values from this data. But today they can't do that anymore because even one OEM, the, the number of vehicles, the number of data they're collecting is huge. Give you a little bit of calculation here is assume that you pay AT&T cellular tower to do these things. Imagine that you have 10 million vehicle, you know, Toyota this last year, one company already have 10 million vehicles. Imagine in the 10 years, they have to have a 100 million vehicle for Toyota alone. Now, how much data they need to collect it? Who gonna be paid for this? Ask you, you and I as an end user to pay this, that's impossible. So we're not gonna be willing to pay this, this money to help them to collect the data. So how do you gonna be move this data analytics intelligence, go to the edge, go to the vehicle, and then reduce the traffic, save the cost. That's another big thing for this connected vehicle uh, side.
So edge computing will be very helpful. The challenge three is what I call the, you know, Rahul is an expert in the cyber physical system. So I just put in here is cyber physical boundary here is another very important thing we need to consider. So many people, when I talk to, as you probably know, today when the people are working on the vehicle, basically there are two groups of people. The one is a traditional, you know, the, the manufacturer or, you know, from the auto engineering. So those guys are more, mostly dealing with the real physical, you know, vehicle. The other group, group of people is more like us, you know, coming from computer science, IT, you know, that we thought, oh, vehicle is very simple. Just writing a for loop, you know, they can make a turn, for example. If I ask you writing a code, for example, you run, you detect some, somebody in front of you. Now you want to hit the brake, right? In the computer science algorithm or in your code, maybe just two lines of code. If some, something, then do something. That is what we get used to. But do you think you can really just writing this code, gonna be putting into the vehicle, sending to the CAN bus, and then you're gonna building a nice vehicle? The, the reality is not. Because you have to consider that in the physical system, that for example, when you hit the brake, and you know, here is a data uh, a colleague has measured for the different type of vehicle in China. They actually physically measure this. If you're hitting the brake, it's taking 230 milliseconds on Lincoln MKZ. And then on you know, the Hongqi in China, H7 is, is taking 362 milliseconds. So no matter how much you, you optimize here, the physical world always have a delay here. So when you consider the real timeliness and all kinds of things, you need to consider the end to end, you know, for the predictability for all of these things. So those are the things that are very important for us to consider. Be, in addition to that, the vehicle dynamics, you know, you, you don't want to sit in a vehicle being feel like it's very rough, right? So during the early days, when I get a chance to have a have a test drive on a couple of uh, you know autonomous vehicles in different companies, the experience is very bad because when because this algorithm when they do do this, they are not like human beings. They don't give you enough time to respond. When they detect something, they're gonna either hit the brake immediately, and then you will feel like a, you know just like a, this very. A uh, kind of a strong action on the human body. So when you design algorithms, you have to consider that the vehicle dynamics, the speed. For example, if you want to make a turn, the algorithm itself needs to consider the current speed and also the turn angle and the many things that the vehicle dynamics should be considered in when you're doing these things. So in other words, just to give you an idea that you need the predictability in the full stack on the vehicles. Uh, last year, uh, what, oh, two years ago, Liang Kui, you know, one of my PhD students, we wrote a paper on IEEE wireless communication. We argue that for the future vehicles here, you need the computation, communication, and the control call, you know, call, call design, we call the 4C here. If you're interested, you can take a look at that paper. So basically, the this kind of the requirements goes to the vehicle computing. That goes to the evolution of auto automotive computing system itself. You know, today, most of the tradition is a vehicle have about 150 to 200 different ECUs. Each of them controls their own. This is okay for the, for the vehicle, you know, before, if they don't have too much other functionalities. But what was the problem is, it's very difficult to deploy some diverse, you know, computing intensive applications, make them not really scalable and also can fit in the new needs of the vehicle. So here is what the software defined architecture for the vehicle gonna look like. So you're gonna have a hierarchical here, you have different zones, you have the controls, computings, and then, you know, you still have some ECUs, but most of this will be a software control the uh, things here. Just to give you a rough idea, as you can see that in a future vehicle might be have one or two dedicated, pretty powerful computing units. One of them might be reserved for the, for the driving. The other, the other part will be more on these uh, different other third-party applications running on top of it. For example, battery diagnostics. You know, you need to real-time, you need to collecting data, do the machine learning training, and then understanding the, the status of your battery, because that, that is very important for you to uh, improve the lifetime and also the efficiency of the battery. So we have another ongoing NSL project is exactly looking for how to use the driving data to improve you know, the, uh, the battery lifetime and, and the, fail, and the, the uh, fail, failures. So those are the idea eventually that you have an edge server cloud and et cetera, so how this is gonna be works, you know. 
the when, you know edge server here when we say edge server it could be multiple places you could be running on a you know uh, at a gas station could be running a cellular tower or even on some poles you know on the roadside unit you can do a lot of things and you're going to be have a lot of different variety of the of the computing unit there gpus fpgas and etc you know never assume there is only one computing unit will be everywhere. That is not going to happen. So there is a heterogeneity is another interesting things for the for us to work on this. So this picture just to show you again about what type of these uh, services can be running on your vehicle. You know, safety uh, services obviously is very important. Mobility services is more like, a, you know, self-parking, you know, path planning and et cetera. Uh, imagine in the future, those all these services is not necessarily provided by the OEM. So you probably haven't thought about this today, but uh, if, assume there is some insurance uh, problem, uh, if that policy is ready, so you could buy a vehicle from Tesla, but then you download another a autonomous driving APP, maybe developed by our group, you know, or you can download another APP from Rahul's group if you want to make your car as a racing car, fine, because the hardware is there, but the, the driving algorithm is developed by one of the uh, third parties, and you can make your car as a racing car if you want. And then you have multiple choices. You today you want to enjoy the life. You know you you can be make it the easy ones. But then if you want to have a fun, you can make it a racing car here. So those are the things going to be changed. It's going to be deployed easily deployed on the vehicle. But this is a vision. Okay, I don't think today any of the vehicle is ready for you to do that. So and also some information service. And the third, last one is the computation because your vehicle have a have a pretty going to be powerful machine there. And this can be used to do other purposes. For example, when Philadelphia Eagle, uh, Eagles are gonna have this, uh, you know, during the games, you have 80,000 people is sitting in the stadium. And today during during that game, everybody using the phone to share videos, share the exciting moment with their friends in the real time. But the cellular tower, it's just one cellular tower. Maybe there's a cellular tower in there, not enough to handle this. And many of this process can be done by the vehicle we parked on the parking ground. And this vehicle have a huge computing power there, can be used to do this type of things. You know, that's just to share you the vision. I know that there are some companies already doing this. Now, in a mobile, they can just drive a huge computing vehicle parked there to provide the communication, computing, storage, and all kinds of things for you. So that was, so this just give you an idea, this our imagination, the future business model. You know, if you're looking for how the money you know, the money, the coin sign is going on here is somebody pay the money, service customer, and then, you know, each of them, like the Apple, this infrastructure, service provider, infrastructure provider, hardware provider, and the vendor, VOEMs, eventually even yourself as a customer, you can also uh, get in, uh, getting a portion of this revenue. So to, the, to a certain point, the ideal case is you're getting a vehicle for free because you don't need to pay vehicle uh, any money. By the end of the vehicle, you get you drive for ten years, and also you make a lot of money through through your vehicle. So this is something that is what we imagine the vehicle computing era is going to be look like. So there is a lot of challenges down the road um, because of the time. I'm not going to be talking each of this, uh, but as you can see that, for example, for any of this new, re this is the research. Here is you need a benchmarking. What's the workload look like, right? Because you if you come out a new CPU design. A new chip design, you need a workload. And then distribute the real-time operating system. This is very important because a vehicle is going to be talking to other people today, even the real-time on the vehicle alone, you know, AutoWare Foundation, Raul, and, and a, a group of the, 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 the colleagues globally, you know, we are working with the AutoWare Foundation you know, trying to make this right now is uh, it's on the individual vehicle. You know, my group is more interested on the, how to make the real-time predictability. But then if you think about the next thing, it's going to be a distributed, because the vehicle is going to be need to talk into the, talking to the infrastructure, talking to the other vehicle. How can you make this still and the, and the you know, reliable safety? So, so to, that is another kind of interesting, you know, topic. Programmability. How are you going to be writing code for this? You assume that uh, there is a platform here, you know, Apple have the SDK, so you can easily develop this app, app develop. But today, there's no such things available. You can easily write a code for a vehicle. So real-time 
runtime support the scheduling energy consumption when the EV is coming in. So electrical vehicle, and then that uh, you save the energy, save the power, heat, many things. You know, security obviously is another big big deal. And then if you are, you know, water, uh, you know, at the pen, and if you're in the business school, and then in, uh, in other, uh, for the people who are in the business world, this is itself is a very interesting you know, issue. There is no such things available, or we don't know what, what going to be look like uh, that, uh, you know, insurance company, and then you have the policy makers and et cetera. There's uh, quite a few things that uh, need to be completely uh, changed, you know, in terms of this. So that was, uh, the idea, hopefully I give you an idea about that, uh, the vehicle stuff. So in the next, I will take like 10 minutes here to, to give you a, a idea about what our lab is doing. So I'm very uh, happy to answer some questions offline because uh, today probably we don't have time to answer all these questions. And uh, if you're interested in to seeking more collaboration that uh, we will be very happy to do that. So the car lab, which I, uh, you know, back to uh, 2017, uh, that uh, when when we think about you know connected vehicle autonomous vehicle going to be something so we 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 you know I form a car lab at the Wayne State with a couple of other you know co colleagues and then immediately we realize that there is no such a platform available although there are some small robots but they are not really for the autonomous for the computer science uh, you know people to look at this so what we have done is in the last few years uh, we have you know designed different type of platform so that we can support our own research. For example, the Hydro One is an indoor autonomous you know, platform. And uh, I think last year, because of uh, several other uh, universities, they want to use this for research and education. Uh, we already, you know, sheep, uh, you know, we, we, we starting one of my postdocs, uh, you know, starting a small uh, company. Basically, is, uh, if there's an order coming in, so they want to buy one. So we just uh, make one to share a ship to them. So it's a sort of, uh, I think, uh, uh, five other universities using this right now. We also have like a Zebra, is, which is can run it out the door, but it's what is much more powerful can host a one, 150 kilogram, you know, on top of that. So this is a, so allow us to start in the workload, the relationship with energy efficiency and et cetera. So we also have this Hydra I mentioned earlier. So those are the research platforms so that uh, we available in the lab. This allow us to contribute, you know, to studying research in, in, in here. Then back to 2018, so what we did is immediately, as I mentioned earlier, that how can you write a code, you know, for a vehicle, if someone want to work on this. So that's why we come out of this uh, open VDAP, you know, open vehicle data analytics platform. So basically you have, you know, you encapsulate all these uh, kind of sensors. So we provide a library here called a lib VDAP. So then, you can writing a code here, call you know reading a sensor very easily, and then so that you can write into de develop a different type of the you know different type of applications on that. So that was the vision. We have this open VDAP, and then for example, one of the applications to show you that a vehicle, particularly for the vehicle computing, is uh, Lanka has published this paper in 2018. It's called a uh, safe share ride. The idea is, for example. Um, there, how you can guarantee the the safety of the of the passengers sitting on the Uber and the, you know DD this type of things. So basically, we leverage you know the speech recognition, driver behavior detection, which technically you can re, you can read the the driving behavior data, you know, so that you you detect if there is some you know fighting ongoing etc. And then you can immediately sending a signal to the to the police officers in case there was a fighting ongoing there. So all these things. You know, it's a possibility because after you have this open VDAP and you can read in this and, uh, you know, to provide the third party services. Another one, which is uh, we have been developing, working with MIT Lincoln Lab, eventually used by New Jersey uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security using as a reference architecture. The idea is, you know, when the, when the, when the police officer come out with a body camera, you know, during or while they're working close to the, to the, uh, uh, to the vehicle, or to a human or somebody, so those you know they can rely on sending back the, the data to the um, to the vehicle, so that the vehicle can continuously you know monitoring what's the surrounding environment. And a lot of this fatality of the police officer is because when they when they walk out of the vehicle, the environment is dangerous. You know, imagine that you have a vehicle can continue continuously monitoring this, and then can remind the police officer that 
if there is a danger while they are working outside. You know, this has been implemented uh, using our, you know, uh, has been uh, implemented and uh, we call it auto uh, valves, you know, just to show you uh, some, uh, some interesting ideas of how the vehicle, you know, can be used for the computing purposes. And the most recently, we have developed this uh, vehicle programming interface. So that is uh, the one of the one step to moving, moving on to hopefully we can, uh, you know, at least for the academia purposes, so, so that the other, uh, and the other researchers, colleagues, they can easily can write in a code. For example, I give, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you want to write in a code in your classroom, that I, if, the v, if the camera detected there is an object, then I want to control the vehicle, make it stop, right? This concept is very easy. But today, I don't think any of, of us know how to write in a code if I give you a vehicle. So what happened here is we provide this uh, a set of the VPIs and the, you, you can do different data control and algorithm. Now, show you an example is using three lines of code, you can easily write in the, that you're reading from the camera, land keeping, and then you, you can make a change. So to, to keep the car in the middle of the lens. You know, this is a very high level uh, way so that we can encapsulate the vehicle dynamics. Uh, you know, the one I mentioned earlier, from the programming point of view is you just uh, put in the logic here. Okay, I need to slow down. I need to change the lens and et cetera. So that was the idea we have been uh, developing. The other things we have been working on is how do we provide this distributed computing platform for the connected vehicles? Imagine that uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, you know, Lincoln financial field. So those, you have uh, some computing uh, requirements and you can rely on the other vehicles to running different models. The reason is very is because different models, they may have different uh, heterogeneity, you know, different computing power, different uh, the architecture. Some of them might be have a FPGA, some of them have a GPU. So you have a model, you have to select the right Right vehicle to run your stuff. That is the the one is going to be the reality. So that was another thing I want to you know mention here. The other thing is when you do the DNA inference, you know you have a lot of variations. These variations could be caused by the hardware. So if you, for those of you if you are not familiar with this, even the same hardware you purchase, uh, you know the same model, everything is, is exactly the same. You purchased them from Intel, for example, the CPU. The maximum variability could go to 16%. You know, this is coming from, there's an NSF expedition project that funded to uh, uh, Sandeep Gupta at the UC San Diego is variability. You know, even the hardware are gonna have a variability. The same, um, the same, the uh, machine learning model, you're running on the, on the same hardware. There is a lot of variabilities. You know, one of my students has been uh, working on this. You find out that uh, in the real life, you have a variability. And then how can you really guarantee that the predictability is a big, is a big challenge here? This variability comes from multiple you know, potential places, you know, read, pre-process, inference, and et cetera. So that is good to, uh, if you're interested in this paper, you're more than welcome, just you know, write me an email, so we're, we're happy to share you, the, you know, this paper because that was still under review. In the last December, that uh, based on this observation of the, of the variabilities, so we come out of one of the, uh, this is a very simple solution. I wouldn't say that it's very complicated, but the idea is if we know that one of the, the frame that is not gonna be, even you finish them, but it's too late you know, to make a decision, then we just throw, throw this uh, frame away. So it's a uh, key idea is here. I'm just to uh, tell you that uh, we are uh, working on this. So in addition, here is another one that we have been working on is because uh, the sensor technology is also continuous improvement. So some of these uh, the camera right now the makers they want to put in the they want to put in more computing power on the camera itself so that they can do more computing before they can study sending the data even in the RAS or the autoware you know the data movement within this uh, within a vehicle is also very uh, you know is has a pretty large latency here I would say in that way if you are using RAS because they're using published subscriber based architecture. So there's a trend right now is make this camera also computing ready. So what we have been doing here is a collaboration with the Bell Labs. The idea is, can we start and compress these images as many as possible? And then we can using machine learning algorithm on top of this uh, compressed images. There is to your surprise is, you know, our human beings, when you compress 10 frames, we can not really, we're gonna see the blurred there. It's not a resoluted, however, Machine learning algorithms can 
که سپرایزنی زی یک جی که ستیل دیتک دیم یک پریدی آمورست سیمینر اکیرنسی دیر so that was the idea we come out of this so then we can do quite a few interesting things we're running on the edge and then on the you know on the vehicle and then the edge server you have different version of the you know at that time as you can see we're using a v3 at that time to run this so i think perfect time so here is you know all this work you know it's because of we have you know this our industry sponsors collaborators and partners so they have been either providing data, providing the equipment, donated equipment, and some of them even, you know, uh, just allow us to using their their stuff. So right now, I want to show you the two pictures. This is a star campus at, uh, at the University of Delaware. Uh, you know, this is uh, where our lab actually is uh, there. And here is a D star is one of the infrastructure we are trying to build on our star campus. So you're going to have this uh, uh, have this uh, you know roadside unit going to be deployed on these different intersections, and we're going to have some autonomous shuttle. Uh, well, maybe a, another autonomous bus is going to be running here uh, on our on the campus here. So I think I was uh, almost ready to stop here. Summary is hopefully I convince you the vehicle computing era is coming. There is a lot of opportunities, good opportunity for the researchers or PhD students to identify the topics. So I have a uh, two relevant events I want to uh, share with you. The one is if you are interested in this, uh, so we are organized the first, you know, vehicle computing special issue on the IEEE Internet Computing Magazine. Uh, deadline is on March 10th. Today you still have like a few uh, some time. You consider this a magazine paper so that you don't need to go to that deep, very deep of these uh, theoretical things. So if you are interested, more than welcome to writing a paper, case study, all kinds of things. So we like that. And another one is the IEEE most conference will be happening in Detroit, May 17th to 19th. So that if you are interested, uh, this is the first time, uh, first uh, version of the conference, but we already have people from industry, like, uh, you know, the robot day from Sophie, uh, from ARM gonna come here, give a keynote. And then we have um, another senior VP from Stellantis uh, OEM gonna come here talking about that. So we, you know, we also have a tutorial and the auto we're gonna have a tutorial there, you know, uh, that uh, one of my colleagues from Japan, so he probably will be coming here to have a tutorial. And then we're gonna have a, a few demos here, hopefully that uh, some of you can make it. All right, thank you so much. You know, all these uh, vehicles, uh, you know, all, all these uh, the papers I mentioned are available, uh, you know, online uh, on our website. So if you are in particularly, you, if you said you don't want to look at many of the things, here are the two uh, papers that, uh, sort of a survey paper as you, you can read in order to get into this field. Okay, all right. I have a sort of, a, still have some time. I can happy to take some questions. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Wei Song. Uh, this is an amazing amount of work and very exciting. So I'll, I'll open it up for any questions. And I also have some questions of my own, but uh, anyone in the audience has questions. Yeah, so 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 one one question I had was, you know, with this uh, Sophie coming in, and Sophie is one kind of API approach, right? So, uh, from the I mean, the there is kind of software defined vehicle at the development time, and then you know at the testing time, and then during the lifetime of the vehicle. So, uh, could you like sort of describe like you know what do you think in uh, is the benefits and and the first kind of really the killer app so to speak for the development time and uh, and then you know what would be like you know the more important you know critical apps during the deployment time using this software defined vehicle architecture okay th th that's i will try to answer that because software defined a vehicle even today if you're asking 10 people, you might get in, you know, at least eight different answers. Yeah, it's like you IoT know. or some buzzwords. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I think, yeah, but the good news is we, you know, we, we all have the software architecture. You know, software itself is also is continuously evolving at this point. You know, I talked to Robert Day and also the software guy from um, you know, back to the UK. Uh, here is what I'm thinking. Depend if you really want to explore all the software stuff, then the application should be, uh, just like uh, just like a testing in the software world. So you, you want to go through as much possible, go through their different components. But if you ask me that uh, the the way, 
for 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 the you know that one of these killer application they they could demonstrate it here very useful would be the autonomous parking because autonomous parking I I think that probably is the one that uh, most likely will be uh, uh, the the easiest and the people willing to take that the reason is again you know, if, during the autonomous parking there's no human beings there well they might be still have it depending if you are going to a parking structure but in the valid parking style then most likely you you already get out of the uh, there so let the vehicle just drive on their own so the safety is a less concern and uh, i know for example in china they already they already come out a, na a national uh, sort of a standard for the autonomous parking so if you want if if a particular oem you want to sell this function you have to follow that specification so you the more you know sort of like a standard now so that might be a very good uh, um application for for the people to to starting to, you know to in a real deployment but for the testing you, you in the development side i think that because you are not going to run in the real world right you're using this object detection on this these things uh it's depend on the architecture that which one you really want want to go you know, go through the, the VPIs so that you probably come out a application that can leverage this uh, you know I have the seen I, I keep in talking to them asking them to do you do you have already have some sort of SDK that we can use since I haven't seen the API yet I, I don't know what the exactly application can benefit from that yeah but the idea is I don't I think I hope that they will have a certain number of this you know be more focused you know, rather than you you want to cover everything yeah, you know that, that, that yeah that's why i'm easy. trying to figure out like what would be the first few you know uh applications like for and i think you know as you mentioned autonomous parking seems you know it's not very critical and it's in a closed system uh so i think just having communication to control the vehicles drive-by wire system makes a lot of sense it, it is still yeah. real time but uh, it's yeah. not not uh, in a crowded uh, or cluttered space like that. Yeah. So so that that is the one I can see uh, will be a function uh, that uh, people is willing to pay. You yeah. know, eventually whether we which function you, you can deploy is dependent the on customers. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a parking. I, I think Philly is a typical place. So people are gonna love it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And, and, and now, like looking forward, as you started in the uh, University of Delaware, uh, uh, what, what what kind of project are you looking uh, like any one project you can pick that you're looking to launch over there? Yeah, for, for, for this particular one is uh, now I'm quite, quite interested, you know, again, related to the uh, out, outdoor part, you know, we really want to understanding the, the workload that you know the, the workload part of the autonomous uh, you know the, the vehicle and then how this workload can really impact the goes to the outdoor uh, you know for example the real time the operating system so this is hopefully by the end of that we can uh, sort of somebody can deploy it it is uh, safe enough you know sort of you know safe enough so they can run it you know the one I'm collaborating with the PIX you know Alex is uh, is also you know uh, with that company I guess that uh, we we can once we get in that platform so we will we want to running you know to to, imp, to uh, implement this and then deploy it here and so that we can uh, really can test it and the good news is i like you know i show you the star campus here is the star campus <clears throat> is not like a, a pure campus so university have a spending uh you know the state of delaware <clears throat> even the state of delaware is taking the star campus as the one of the innovation is like a pen innovation, you know, a pen yeah, innovation. Yeah. You know, they use this uh, uh, as the um, um, as a incubator. The university already moved the office of innovation here. There are three uh, last stack listed companies. Headquarters is already on our star campus. Wow. So, wow. so you so it's very uh, very dynamic and moving. So this way, for example, before I when we started run this autonomous uh, shuttle, we already have a needs here. The uh, Blue Energy, uh, the company, they say that they want to run a, a shuttle from the M Amtrak station to here. So I, I think this is a very lively environment that uh, we, 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 you know, we, we want to do here. So the, another one, 
I, you, you asked me just pick one. I'm sorry, we, <laughs> uh, as, a, as, a, as academic uh, faculty, of you know course, that, right? Course. We, we yeah. always like a lot of things. The other thing I want to make this is as a uh, is is a live in, a test environment, so that we also have a you know digital twin. Uh, I'm working with Amazon right now is uh, trying to make the digital twin of the whole Star campus ready. So this wow. way, uh, you, if someone is running, uh, want to test their algorithm, they can through the AWS, uh, through our, the, the, we call the Bluebird, through the digital twin, then they can run in their stuff on our uh, Star campus without coming here. Great. But the, the traffic and these things, uh, the, the stuff will be available through this uh, di digital twins uh, in, in that case. Okay. Yeah, I, I see the the background of the Star Campus looks amazing. Yeah, this is just uh, earlier days. It's just a uh, one building, but then yeah, yeah, other, uh, yeah, we are we already building quite a quite, quite a few uh, you That's know staff amazing. there. That's yeah, awesome. next time when you come here, you 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 will see it. Definitely, I'm looking forward to that. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, you know, for this uh, overview of uh, so many exciting research. And actually, just to say uh, personally, I think you know I'll follow up with you also on the autonomous valet parking because I think that's something. You know, and uh, looking forward to doing more uh, uh, collaboration through the Autoware Center.